Here we go. I'm actually going to use the back of the worksheet that you got today in class. That would be February 12th, uh, 2015. So if this video is still on the Internet a few years from now, hey, uh, more power to it. Here we go. Um, system linear equations. If I said go graph the solution to the system of equations, basically you need to go graph it and see if the lines touch. So here we go. Here's the very first point. And now I use my slope to move to the second point. And you can also back up backwards after you found that pattern and continue line, your line on. Um, there we go. And so let's connect the points on that very first equation. Now we can straighten it up. And there we go. It hits all the the points on that line. Now let's go through and get blue uh, for the second one. Here's our y-intercept that's positive 3. Be careful, don't be in a rush here. We would go down 1 and to the right 3. I know we're going away from the line. So let's reverse it. Let's go up 1 and to the left 3. And Now we could go up 1 and to the left 3 again and here you see we're actually going to cross the line right here. So let's go through and graph these two points. We'll extend it on through. There we go. So where do they cross? Um, let's see, it would be negative 3, 4. So my answer to this one would be negative 3, 4. When I look at uh, number 10 here, uh, it's very similar. I just go and graph them. Let's, let's graph this first one in red. Um, my y-intercept is positive 3. And in this case, my slope is negative 1, so I'd go down 1 and to the right 1. And we can just continue the pattern on. Now, uh, let's go through and connect our points very carefully. Someone asked me in class today, how, how many points do I have to extend it? That's not really what we're doing. You, you might only have to extend it for two points, but you might have to open it up and extend it uh, longer than you've extended any line because you're wanting to see, are these lines going to bump into each other, and if so, where? And um, you just you never know how it's going to play out. So here, the second line that we're going to put in blue is at negative 3, and I've got a positive slope, so I go up to and to the right, 1, up 2, and to the right, 1, and there we go, we've hit that line, uh, the very first line, that's where our intersection point's going to be. And so now we just have to say, okay, our solution to the system of equations is right here where the two lines intersect, which was 2, 1. So our solution is 2, 1. The x value is 2, and the y value is 1. And what that means, and I didn't go into it with number 9, is I can go and plug in my x and y values, and it makes both of these equations true. And that's all that a solution to an SOE is. Does it make both of your equations true? How can you find that solution? One way is to graph it, and if uh, the two lines touch, any place where the lines touch is considered the solution. Um, we also had these right here, and I didn't ask you to. I did not ask you to go and solve these. Instead, I said, "Could you figure out how many solutions this system of equations have?" Well, uh, let's rewrite the two equations: 5x minus 7y equals zero. Uh, get it into slope-intercept form. In other words, get the y all by itself. You know, just like this one is here. Y equals zero. And I'll explain why I'm leaving that space there in a second. And let's just go and get this one into slope-intercept form out of the standard form. So this one away. Sorry, I always like to have the uh, x values put in first. So let's just call this negative 5x uh, plus 0. And now we can just divide by negative 7 all the way across. 
and we're left with y equals 5 sevenths x because these two negatives kind of cancel out there and 0 divided by negative 7 is 0 okay now uh, what is the slope of this one well we didn't see an x so basically it's like a 0x okay and this uh, y-intercept is just being added on so let's go compare do we have the same y-intercepts let's see this one's 0 and this one's 0 so it could be this one or it could be this one. So the y-intercepts are the same. Um, what about the slope? Well, this is 5 sevenths, and the slope here is 0. So we have different slopes. So that means uh, the lines are going to intersect, which means we have one solution. Now on the quiz tomorrow, since you've only had literally uh, two days to get used to it, this chart right here that's showing in red will be on the board. So you can look up and reference this during the quiz if need be. Um, let's do this one for number 12. 5x minus y equals 0 and y equals 5x. Hey, let's go ahead and get it into um, slope intercept for this first one. Now, if you want, you can add the 0 onto the end here. Listen, here's what's going on. This is like a negative 1. It's been like that the whole time. Uh, we need it to be a positive 1 in front of it, so we'll divide everything by negative 1. And we're left with y equals 5x plus 0. And what about this one? I don't see a y-intercept here. Just add on plus 0. So let's go compare these two slope-intercept equations. Let's see, the y-intercept for both of them is 0. So it's either this one or this one. And let's compare the slope. The slope is 5 here, and it's, it's 5 here also. So the slope is the same. In this case, it means that when we go to graph it, it'll be exactly the same, which means infinite solutions. So how many solutions does this SOE have? It's got infinite. Moving on to number 13, here's a new uh, system of equations. Um, y equals negative 4. Let's go ahead and put that in slope-intercept form. The y is by itself. If you notice, there's no x, so it's the same as if it was 0x minus 4. So our slope is actually going to be 0, and our y-intercept will be negative 4. When we take a look at the second one over here, it's in standard form. And so just get the x away from the y. Get it to the other side of the equation. So um, if you need to, look, you, you can put a 1 there. So that's negative 1, and this is plus 1. So this makes it cancel out. And we're left with a positive 3y equals 1x minus 12. Uh, you can put the 1 in front of these variables anytime if there's no other coefficient or number. Um, we can now divide 3 by 3. But then we've got to divide every number on this other side by 3. Pay careful attention how I do this. This was a positive 1, and I'm dividing it by 3. So this becomes 1 third, a fraction that stands on its own. And I'm just going to slide this x right down here to the side because the 1 was multiplying the x. Now this fraction is multiplying the x. And now this part right here, this is my personal style. Um, I know it says minus 12, but I'm going to think of it as a negative 12. And this is a positive 3 with negative 12 divided by positive 3. It's negative 4. So I'll just slide that in beside it as if it was a subtract 4. So now we've got this in slope-intercept form. Let's go through and compare uh, our y-intercepts. Uh, both of them are negative 4. So it could be either one of these two. We know it can't be this row of answers, so we can throw that out. Our slope here is 0, and our slope here is 1 -third, so they have different slopes. So they're not the same slope, so it's not this one. So it's going to be two lines that intersect, which means there's only going to be one point. There will be one solution. And we haven't solved it. We don't know what that solution is, but when we do solve it, if I asked you to solve it, there would only be one point where these two lines touched. 14 is the very last one. The very first equation does not have a y-intercept on there, 
or at least shown in the equation, which means if it's not shown, it has to be zero. So let's just go ahead and put plus zero on there. It's fine to do that. Now, the second equation. You'll notice right away that essentially uh, it's in standard form. So let's just go ahead and get the x to the other side. Pulls up, uh, pull down the 3y, and that equals negative 6x minus 4. Always put the term with the x in front. Any number that was over here, put it in the back. Now, uh, divide all the numbers by 3, so that way the y is going to be a positive 1 in front of it. And there's no need to write the positive 1. You can if you want to, but um, you certainly don't have to, and most of the, the books you read will not show that. Negative 6 divided by 3 is negative 2x, and negative 4 divided by positive 3 is still a negative fraction, so it's minus 4 thirds. All right, our uh, y-intercepts, negative 4 thirds and 0, totally different, so it's not the same. Um, so it could be this one, or it could be this one. Let's look at our slopes. Uh, the slopes are the same. They're both negative 2. So in this case, we have parallel lines, and we will have no solutions. So how many solutions are there? There are no solutions, or none. Okay. So again, on the quiz tomorrow, you're going to have this graph or chart uh, up on the board to help you out to do these. But you're also going to have to do these. Um, the directions would be similar to uh, this right here. Eliminate one set of variables and then solve for the remaining variable. This, this is meant to help you start to learn how to use the elimination method. Um, here's what you do. You add the two equations together. So what is 2x plus 2x? It's 4x. What is negative 1y plus 1y? Well, that would be 0. And then um, you tell me what's 8 plus negative 4. That's 4. And now the last thing that you do is you just divide right here because these two numbers are multiplying. And we know that x is 1, and you're done. Okay? This is half of the solution. If I could figure out what y was equal to, I would have solved this uh, system of equations. However, um, I'm not asking you to do that. I'm just saying go get me one variable. Here's number 16. 4x plus 3x is 7x. Negative 5 plus 5y is 0. And negative 45 plus 10 is negative 35. Divide both sides by 7. And x equals negative 5. Again, to find the true solution, I need to find out what y is. But I've not asked you to do that. I just said to start and solve for the one variable um, that was still around after you eliminated one of them. Number 17. 10x. Four y's cancel out. And this is 40. So now I can divide both sides by 10. x equals 4. And here's number 18. 6x plus 2x is 8x. Negative 5y plus 5y cancels out. This is negative 40. When you add them up, and then we can divide by the number left in front of that variable, the coefficient. So x equals negative 5. I'm not asking you to take it any further. I will uh, point this out too. If I had like negative 2x plus 3y equals, um, let's just say, uh, 18. And I had uh, positive 2x um, Let's do a minus 6y equals um, 6. There we go. We could still add these up. And the difference is the x's are going to cancel out this time. See this right here? This time there are no x's, but our y's are still left over. So 3y plus negative 6y would be negative 3y equals 18 plus 6 is 24. The only difference is that we've got a y left over instead of the x. 
And so now we could divide both sides by negative 3, you know, the coefficient here, the number in front of the variable. So y would equal negative 8. Now this is a problem not on your homework. I just wanted to show you an example where the x is canceled out, and we handle it the same way as if the y is canceled out. Uh, you take with what you had left, you, you add up your like terms, and then you just um, divide to get the variable all by itself. Hopefully this will help uh, set you straight, um, give you a chance to look over and see what you did wrong or what you did right and give you a little bit of confidence. Good luck on the quiz tomorrow.